So Shopify just released these brand new features for B2B and the addition to integrate it within uh, external systems like Salesforce. My name is Justin and I'm going to be breaking down what exactly Shopify B2B entails as well as how you can use and leverage these tools for your business. So like I said, Shopify B2B is coming to Shopify. So it's already a leading platform in B2C and now with Shopify Plus, you can have B2B function as well. So you can be selling to businesses and consumers. The only requirement that you're gonna need for these tools is Shopify Plus. Keep in mind that um, Shopify Plus is gonna run about $2,000 a month. So uh, this is not some light investment. So the bread and butter for these Shopify tools is the companies. Companies allow you to store all the information about your customer and um, they allow you to go and uh, group your individual customers or contacts under this company. Um, every single feature in the new B2B suite interacts with companies in some way. So that includes locations, payment terms, price lists, tax exemptions, and the uh, aforementioned customers. The next thing is locations. So it's important to note that each location, each company can have a different location, which think of a location like an address, um, and can order uh, to every location. And you can either enforce the customers to go and use locations, or they can input uh, their own location. And locations can have different payment terms, different price lists, different tax exemptions, and you can also specify what customers apply to what location. Payment terms, there's a list of payment terms that have uh, that are part of the B2B suite. Um, some, some of them include due on fulfillment, net 15, and net 30. Um, the great thing about payment terms is that Shopify will now automatically send invoice and payment reminders. And so no more third-party apps, no more third-party solutions, all native Shopify, which is great. Price lists are a way of going and setting individual prices or for variants as well as percentage markup or markdown. So you can give a flat 5% discount on your products. You can give a flat 5% or 10% um, increase on all of your products um, as well as the fact that you can sell individual products at some sort of different price, which is unrelated to whatever markup you have. Catalogs. Now catalogs are new in the Shopify Winter 23 release. Um, you might not have access to them yet, but what they do is they combine priceless and quantity requirements. And so now you can enforce some sort of order quantity minimum and order quantity maximum, and you can do a quantity increment size. So think of catalogs as a way to, if you have towels, you wanna to sell towels in sets of tens, now you can use catalogs to go and um, sell 10 towels at a time. Keep in mind that this doesn't allow some sort of bulk discount, like a bulk tiered discount. Like let's say you have um, 10, uh, you know, a price at 10 towels and a price at 100 towels. Uh, you will still need to use Shopify scripts to go and leverage this. With these changes, a new login workflow has been uh, introduced. This is required for the B2B features. Um, what the new workflow means is that passwords are no longer required and the way that users log in is a one-time passcode is sent to their email. Um, this is good that this is set up although this restricts a lot of some of the functionality that I've seen implemented for B2B, right? Because you can't customize this. This is a, sh a page that not only Shopify controls and is branded as, as such, uh, but additionally, you can't have any custom information or forms in this page. One of the things that's uh, important is controlling the information and ordering process. And so we have, that capability with customer permissions. And so access can be granted or restricted in a given company and even can be as specific as location. And there are three permissions at the time of recording. That would be location admin, order only, and no access. So let's break down every single permission. 
Let's start with location admin. This is the highest permission granted. So they can do things like view past orders, place new orders, and see additional terms um, and information about the company. So the payment terms that uh, has been agreed to, the um, tax ID that has been provided. The next permission is the order only. They can do just that. They can place new orders. They cannot look at past orders. They cannot look at the additional information. The final permission is no access. Um, if you can imagine, this just means you can't see orders or place orders. And this can be granted, again, per location. So you can have a location admin. It could be a, a location admin at place A, but then have no access to place B. Tax exemptions are another thing that, while are not necessarily exclusive to the B2B suite, have been streamlined quite significantly. So now at each location, you can store a tax ID and an exemption reason. And Shopify will help go and um, do tax exemptions for a given state. For instance, most of the exemption reasons in the US are for resellers. And so if you're a California reseller, then Shopify will not charge tax in California, uh, for example. So all of that can be leveraged with the new tax exemption. Now, I'm very impressed with these features overall. That being said, there are a few things that make me nervous. Um, first and foremost, there's no ability for companies to input information themselves and submit it. Uh, and this includes things like the user permission as well as the tax ID. And so there will be, you will, to implement and manage this, you will need some sort of team that is trained in either taking in information from companies and or inputting this into Shopify. The next thing is the tax exemption. Uh, there's just a short list of tax exemptions, which is all primarily focused towards reseller. Um, I know I helped implement a B2B solution for schools, and so there was no um, non um, those would be classified under a nonprofit tax exemption, and there was nothing in the new Shopify B2B that helped nonprofit exemption. Additionally, like I mentioned previously, there's no company branding in the account page, and so your store will feel pretty bleak and empty when they're looking at their account. And the last thing is that there's no bulk discounts, so a lot of your Shopify scripts that you may have for buy one, get one, bulk tier discounts, etc., will still be necessary in spite of the new features. So with that, what are we doing? How are we leveraging this new system? And how are we helping our existing customers? So first and foremost, anything that we were using a custom code, custom workflow to go and manage, we are now migrating to the B2B features. The biggest thing would be the payment terms. I know um, I've seen multiple times that you want net 30 payment terms and those are done through basically a payment gateway and then we're collecting payment outside of Shopify. Now everything can be done through Shopify, which is great. The next thing, as we're a Salesforce partner, we're gonna be migrating a lot of our Salesforce to Shopify integrations to use the new B2B APIs, which were just released. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you think that there's something that I can do and to help you with your Shopify implementation, get in touch with the links down below. With that, thanks and have a good day.